Hey friends, I'm Otis Gibbs, and this is my buddy Susie Monick, and she's going to tell you a story about hanging out with Blaze Foley. When I was dating Richard Dobson, Richard Towns, Blaze, and a guy named Rex Bell would all kind of hang together, and I'd go to Texas with Richard. He had a beach house, which I think Sergio's dad later got, or so, and it was in Galveston. So... um it was just kind of, you know, and, and again, these guys would hang out and do day drinking. It was, you know, it was it was something you have to kind of train to do, like being a prize fighter or something, I think. So we were in Texas, I think, was kind of a first meeting. But then Blaze Foley came to Nashville and and he would pitch his songs and he would carry them around in a Ronald Reagan mask like a big rubber mask. And um, I believe Towns kind of, he might have borrowed money from Towns. He really wanted a Ronald Reagan mask, but that's what he would carry his cassette tapes in. Back in the days, we didn't even have CDs. And he would carry those and maybe a bottle of booze. And, um, and my encounter with Blaze was, I was friends with a guy named Rabbit who... Um, now he rests in peace, but he he played bass with Joe's son, but he also um, it, you knew he would keep you all up, up for a party all night. So I had a house in Bell Mead, and Blaze came over, and Town well Towns was over there. We were jamming a little, but as the, the night wore on, it was down to me, Blaze, and Rabbit, and I had a big upright piano. And Rabbit wrote a song called Best Western Christmas. It's a beautiful song. It's like, um, I'm having a Best Western Christmas this year, and I guess it's the best I, it could be. And so he's playing on the piano, and Blaze would howl. Like when, you know, so you'd play a song, and he's singing, and, and Blaze would go, oh, oh. So I had a cassette tape at the time of Blaze howling along with this song. So we did this song into the wee hours of the morning and 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 picked and played piano and guitars and banjos. And the sun came up and um and Blaze said to me, he said, uh, uh I'm shaking so bad. Uh can you dial the phone? You know, he, he first he wanted to call towns, but then he said, um I can't even dial the phone. Can you run to the liquor store and get me a bottle of, of liquor so I can dial the phone to call Towns to come pick me up or whatever or whoever? So it was just me and him early in the morning, and there were tree tremors outside. It's weird how you remember these weird little details, but, um, you know, but we had still been up from the night before, and Blaze looked out the window and he said, Oh my God, there are men in the trees. Like it was kind of real, like what's going on? And that's what it was. And I did live close by to a liquor store and got him a little pint so he could kind of settle his, you know, settle, stop shaking. And I just remember that vividly and, and him and his mask. And, and so it was just like a one night, you know, spending the night with him, but it was just a beautiful, you know, making music kind of night. So I remember him being kind of more quiet, you know, a big, tall, quiet guy. I, I don't know. And this was kind of the Christmas right before he died. So it, I think it was like late 80s. So I just remember this night, you know. And and it's so weird because um, if it wasn't for this little cassette that I had where I had taped him howling along with Best Western Christmas, I— you know, we didn't have like people set up the camera and the iPhone back in the day. You lived in the moment a lot more back in those days, and you just kind of played the music and and stayed up and and that's you know, and, and then you know got up in the morning, hung over, and, and went on with the next day. 